Hey, what is good, my dudes? DeVeorn here, bringing you part three of our arcane spellcasting guide. Part three, we're going to be going over mage spells, mage book level three. This is where shit gets fun. I'm actually really excited to do this video. We have no fucking internet right now, so I'm super psyched to get caught up and get ahead of the game, per se, and start knocking out some of these videos. So, we're going to be going over every single... Uh, mage spell and the mage book level three in detail. We're talking about what the spells do, who can't use them because of their specialization, what they're good for, what they suck at, and some cool things you can do with the spells that you may or may not have known. A couple caveats before we get started. I play this game on insane difficulty with no saves, no reloads on SCS with the tweak anthology installed as well to make the game extra, extra hard. This makes the enemy spellcasters much more intelligent, they use different spells, this adds extra abilities to enemies. It's still very balanced and fair, but it makes the game much more challenging. And basically what I'm saying is pretty much everything that I'm going to be talking about is going to be in direct relation to those settings. However, pretty much everything I say is going to apply to core rules unmodded as well. Also, I'm playing the Enhanced Edition, which uses Baldur's Gate 2 rules. In the original Baldur's Gate 1, a lot of these spells will be different. But... Like I said, playing with EE, BG2 rules, so that's what we're going to be going over here. However, I will make some uh, nods to the original game and some cool shit you can do with some of those spells in the original that doesn't apply to the BG, EE, or normal Baldur's Gate 2. I have every spell broken down into a tier listing. S tier spells are fucking amazing. You should take a lot of these spells. They're really good, and you should stack your spellbook with them. A tier spells are good or situationally really awesome. You take one or two of those. B tier spells are spells that are okay, uh, not great, not bad, definitely have their uses now and then. C tier spells are spells that, you know, are pretty bad, you really shouldn't be taking them unless you literally have nothing else. And then finally, we have RP tier spells, which are roleplay, which are just spells that I really can't condone you ever taking unless you're actively roleplaying. Alright, so let's go ahead and get started here, boys. We're going to go over the S tier spells first, just like we did in the... The uh, Mage Level 2 video, we're going to go over all the S tier, then A, B, then C, as opposed to doing it alphabetically like we did in the first video. Alright, so let's get it on, boys. First spell, Haste, Alteration Spell, S tier spell all the way. Abjurers can't use this spell because it's an alteration spell. When you cast this, it has a cast time of 3, fairly quickly. 30 foot radius affecting party members only. It says it has an effect of 30 foot radius, but you can only cast it 15 feet away. So you really want to make sure your whole party is grouped up to get this shit. And it lasts for three rounds, plus one round per level. When the spell is cast, all creatures affected function at double their normal movement rate, gain an initiative bonus, and an extra attack per round. So basically, this is almost like wearing boots of speed on everyone in your party. They also get an extra attack per round, although, depending on, if you have half attacks, this actually just rounds up one half. For example, let's say you have seven halves of an attack, which means three and a half. Um, this will put you at four. This will not put you at four halves. This will just put you at four. Uh, in the original Baldur's Gate, you're actually capped out at five attacks per round. Um, period. You can't go above that. If you had Melts Minute Meteors up, which would put you at five, and then cast Haste, you would not get six. You'd be capped at five. I'm pretty sure those rules still apply to the BGEE, although I will have to check that and test that. However, the spell is amazing. Not only is it super useful for combat, giving all your uh, fighters your mages, your archers, everybody, giving them the option to move faster, to dodge stuff, to avoid attacks and position easier, giving them extra attacks per round, in addition to the initiative bonus, which a lot of people kind of overlook speed factor and initiative, but it's actually really useful, letting your attacks go off first. For example, if you have a really low speed factor, because you have Grandmaster and a weapon, you can walk up to somebody, hit them, and then run away before they even have a chance to hit you. And that's why speed factor is actually really, really good. <clears throat> we'll talk about more about that in a later video. This spell is also great for just getting places. If you cast this into the city of Baldur's Gate and you're running all over the place, this will make your runs go a hell of a lot faster. I take many of these spells. Uh, this will be useful for buffing up your summon monsters as well. This is useful for really just everything. It also gives them the extra attack per round too, makes them move faster. This spell is just all around great. It's a strong combat spell and it's really strong outside of combat as well. It will also nullify the effects of a slow if your party gets slowed by an enemy mage or by a mustard jelly or by some other effect or attack. You can use this haste spell to completely nullify the effects of slow. 
I have tested it in the past. The slow will typically make you uh, give you an attack penalty and a movement penalty. I think it gives you AC penalty too. Haste will completely nullify that. However, you won't get the other effects from haste. You won't get the extra attack, you won't get the movement speed bonus, etc. If you have both haste and slow up, it's like nothing happened. You know what I mean? So you can use that to counter each other out. But like I said, you really can't say enough good things about this spell. I always have a couple on all of my mages. At least one or two on each mage. And it's a really good spell. It's honestly a shame. I, I want to take more if I can, but... Level 3, I think we have, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 7 level S tier spells. It's just, level 3 is great. Level 3 is great. I can't say enough good things about level 3. Ace is the first good spell in level 3, and I really couldn't say enough good things about it. I think it also actually gives you a bonus to spellcasting speed, like half of one of a tenth of a round. It's not enough to be noticeable, but it does actually boost your spellcasting speed ever so very tiny slightly. It's really hard to see the difference, but it does actually bo boost your spellcasting speed as well. Like I said, you should use this spell every fight if you can. However, at the end of the spell, you are um, not intoxicated. What's the word? Tired? Your party members are basically bitching in need of a rest. Um, and that will eventually start giving you... Uh... Shit, I can't think of the word now. Exhausted? Tired? Fuck, I can't think of the name of the debuff. It makes you tired, and you should really go to sleep. You shouldn't be hasting for a fight, doing the fight, and then continuing on and moving to new areas and taking new fights without resting. That is something you want to keep in mind. Give me just two seconds here. <clears throat> Alright. What do we got next? Let's see, we got uh, Invisibility 10 Foot Radius. Awesome spell. Illusion spell, so necromancers can't take this. Area effect of 20 feet, casting time of 9, so this is not really something you want to do in combat, although you can. And it will basically put invisibility, just like the level 2 namesake spell, on every single thing around you. This will hit not only your party, but enemies too. Something to keep in mind. This literally gives invisibility in a 20 foot radius. Despite it saying 10 foot radius up there, it's kind of weird. But, uh, the spell's amazing. This is super useful for uh, traveling areas to avoid ambushes. This is super useful for getting through zones full of hostile enemies you don't want to battle. This is super useful for giving you the opportunity to position your entire party before a fight. This is useful for giving your thieves invisibility for backstab bonuses, fighters giving the additional Thaco backstab bonus. This is just great. Useful for giving your mages and uh, clerics the ability to buff themselves without actually breaking invisibility and stealth, making them untargetable in essence, unless the enemy has some sort of divine, or excuse me, uh, divination spells, or has the innate ability to see through invisibility. It's something I don't think I talked about in the other video. A lot of high-level enemies can see through stealth and invisibility, period. Mind flayers, uh, liches, dragons, etc. And of course, all the boss spawn. A lot of the bosses can see through invisibility. But the spell is really, really great. A lot of cool things you can do with it. I've used this in the thick of fighting to survive. For example, if we all just got hit with a dispel magic and we're in a really dangerous fight, we need to get the fuck out of here. Or maybe we're fighting some golems and, you know, our fighter just died and nobody else can hit them because they're magic golems. We can have one person kind of like tank the golems for a second while we have Yawn or somebody else in the back of the fight just trying to cast this spell and viz everybody and then we just walk away. No problems. This spell is great for offensive and defensive use. Really can't say enough good things about it. Definitely an S tier spell. I use this spell multiple times a day. I think I use it almost once every single um, in-game day. Not, you know, you know, you know what I'm saying. Not multiple times a day, every day in my life. I use this spell all the time in my life. But in-game, in Baldur's Gate, I use this thing literally every day in Baldur's Gate. Awesome spell. Can't say enough good things about it. Up next is my personal all-time favorite spell in the game. If anyone ever asks me, what's your favorite spell in Baldur's Gate? It's not Improved Alacrity. It's not Time Stop. It's Melf's Minute Meteors. I, I call them Minute Meteors because I'm an idiot. I'm not exactly sure why. It's an evocation spell, so Diviners uh, miss out on this good shit. Excuse me. Uh, enchanters miss out on this good shit. Diviner Conjuration. Evocation opposite schools enchantment. My apologies. So this will basically create a bunch of tiny little meteors in the caster's hand. You can't actually swap weapons when you have this equipped, which kind of sucks. Casting time of three, so it happens fairly quickly, and they're permanent. 
The duration special, these last forever. They last until you use them literally. And what they do is they're like little darts that they're forming in your hand. You get one per level of the mage. They're treated with a plus five bonus to attack rolls. And when they hit, they do 1d4 plus three points of damage plus an additional three points of fire damage. And you can throw up to five per round. This sounds like crap, right? It's not. It's fucking incredible. In the game, fighters, especially early on, are very limited with what they can do with their attacks per round. Even when you're dual wielding early on, you don't have a lot of attacks per round. Right off the bat, summoning these puts you at the cap of 5. If you have improved haste on, and you should be taking improved haste when you get to level 6, this puts you at the game cap of 10 attacks per round. This is the equivalent of having greater whirlwind on your fucking mages. And you say, well, who gives a shit? It's a mage. He's going to have a crappy Thacko, right? These do benefit from dexterity bonus, and they get a massive, massive Thacko bonus in general. It is not uncommon for a mage to throw these and land every single fucking one. And doing 1d4 plus 3 plus 3 damage is actually quite a bit of fucking damage. This is literally 7 damage guaranteed up to 11 damage per hit. Throw 10 of, them or 10 of them around. If all of them hit, this can do over 100 damage. Level 3 spell. Targeted. And don't forget this does fire damage in addition to physical damage. So if something is immune to one, it's unlikely that it's immune to the other. You can hit certain golems with this that are immune to physical damage but not to elemental. You can hit golems that are immune to fire damage but not to physical. And it's just, it's amazing how awesome and versatile this spell is. In addition, in the base game, these are treated as a plus 6 weapon. This will hit through absolute immunity. The level 9 spell that's supposed to make you immune to all physical damage, these hit through it. There's only two other, three, maybe three other weapons. Ixel's Pike, Ixel's uh, Spear, Ixel's fucking whatever. The Ravager plus 6, Karsimir plus 6. Those are the three plus 6 weapons that hit through absolute immunity, absolute immunity in the base game. Most Minute Meteors do the same. I think actually the, uh, the level 10 spell does as well, but... This is a level 3 spell. This spell hits Kangax. This spell hits Kangax in regular form and Demi-Lich form. This will hit through fucking everything. And because it's doing elemental and physical, chances are it's going to interrupt their spellcasting too. In the base game, these things are beyond busted. Arguably the best spell in the game. In SCS, enemies uh, will have uh, buffed mantles, which will actually make them immune to these, as they should be. And they'll cast protection from magical weapons more often, which will make them immune to them, but... By and large, these things are fucking incredible. And if you have multiple mages in your party, like I've done in the past, where I've run with literally five, six mages in my party, when you have five or six people casting this and throwing them with improved haste, that's literally 60 hits per round. 60 hits per round. They don't even have a chance to move. I fought Adamanti Golems, who literally didn't even have a chance to get their poison cloud off. They are too busy stuttering, trying to walk into the room, just getting hit in the back of the, in the hit in the fucking face, knocking their head back over and over and over and over and over again so fucking quickly. These things are beyond incredible. This turns even the shittiest mage into a fighter that actually does a pretty fucking decent amount of damage. Archers cannot compete with Melts Minute Meteors, and that is the fucking truth. For a long time, a mage with Melts Minute Meteors will outdamage an archer in single target damage. It shouldn't be the case. But it sure as hell is. Especially late. These things are just good from the beginning. Right when you get these in Baldur's Gate 1, they're good. They're not great because you only have a few. Because this is based on how many levels your mage has. And your mage is going to be, what, capped out at level 9 in Baldur's Gate 1. So you can't even get 10 of them. But in BG2, you have a lot more mage levels. You can actually, These only stack up to 20, by the way. You don't get more than 20 every time you cast it. But it's still fucking amazing. I use, I take multiple of these on all my mages. It is such a good fucking spell. I really can't say enough good things about it. And especially being able to hit through mantle is just beyond busted. Hitting in, like, in my game, they can only hit, I don't even know if they can hit through mantle. I'll have to double check that. I think mantle protects against plus four. And my, SCS nerfs these because they're busted. They're literally one of the best spells in the game. And SCS nerfs it. I think it might be considered a plus four weapon. So even mantle would make yourself immune to him. But in the base game, they're considered a plus six. They will literally hit through every protection in the game, except for protection from magical weapons. And because it gives the mage such a massive bonus to their Thacko, and because your mages will generally, aside from Edwin, have decent dexterity, it also benefits from that too. And it's just, yeah, you're going to miss a couple, but 
by and large, you land most of them. Even on fighters, you land most of these. It's just, it's insane how much damage they do. Really. About 10 damage a hit. I can't say enough good things about them, guys. If you haven't played with this spell, because you looked at it, you, a lot of people, when you first play the game, they're like, when I get level 3 spells, I'm getting Fireball, I'm getting Lightning Bolt, I'm getting Monster Summoning. Those are the three big ones that everyone thinks about. Because those are the ones that end up fucking people over when they play. They don't think about this spell. Melsu Newt Meteors is one of the best spells in the game, and if you haven't tried it, you fucking need to. It is literally my all-time favorite spell. I take tons of these. I, I don't think I've ever played a Sorcerer and not taken Melsu Newt Meteors. They're fucking incredible, guys. Try this spell out. A lot of fun. Super fucking good. Literally can't say enough good things about it. As far as cool other little things you can do, aside from hitting through the spell protections and a couple other uh, ways you can use it to interrupt spell casters, I mean, there's not really, like, really cool, neat tricks, but they're just fucking amazing, dude. They're absolutely amazing. You guys should definitely play around with them. Take them. Take multiple of them. If you have multiple mages, have each one take Melsum Newt Meteors and watch how quickly they drop somebody. Especially with improved haste. Holy shit. Alright, up next, Protection from Fire. Protection from Fire is probably the only protection spell that's actually an S tier aside from Protection from Magical Weapons. And the reason for that is, Fire Damage is the most common element to damage in the game, period. This spell is an Abjuration spell, so uh, Transmuters can't use it. Lasts for one turn per level, which is a long fucking time, and it's a touch spell. Targets only one creature, cast in time of three. Goes off fairly quickly, but this is something you really want to cast after a rest and just use it and wear it as a buff for a while. This makes you completely immune to all fire damage, period. 100%. It says that it gives you protection from magical fire in addition to fire. I have not found any spell in the game that actually separates fire and magical fire. It says it absorbs 50% of all damage dealt by magical sources. I have not found a spell in the game that falls under that category. Meteor Swarm, it will absorb 100%. Incendiary Cloud, 100%. Fireball, 100%. Fire Seeds, 100%. Firestorm, Flame Strike. If you have protection from fire up, you're immune to fire, period. You can walk in lava. You can walk in fire. You will not take damage from fire jams from the elemental damage. You will not take damage from fur crag from his dragon's breath, despite him supposedly reducing your elemental resistance. Then when you add something like, say, a protection ring of fire, this puts you over 100%, which means you now are healed by fire damage. When you're standing in an incendiary cloud with over 100% elemental resistance to fire, you will actually gain HP every round it hits. There's some really fun things you can do with this spell. If you have protection from fire on everybody, you can drop meteor swarms, incendiary clouds, fire storms from planetars, and just have this massive raging inferno of fire damage that will not only be doing damage to enemies, even drow will take damage from incendiary clouds when you stack them up. Even drow will take hits from that shit. This will burn the shit out of your enemies, and it will heal you while you're in it. It's actually really, really amazing just how much healing you get when you have multiple clouds and incendiary clouds and other things going off. You do have to be careful, because if you get dispelled in the middle of a multiple incendiary clouds, you're basically going to get one shot. On insane difficulty, incendiary cloud hits really fucking hard. Firestorm does too. I have lost several mages in the past who were standing in clouds when I didn't think they were, or someone else. I don't think anyone's actually been dispelled inside a cloud and died, but I think we've had some really close calls in the past. When that happens, you can always swap around Batista's Revenge, or Battleista's Passport, or whatever the fuck the fire resist uh, ring is, and some other gear. Uh, Fur Crags um, armor, for example, when you get the red dragon scales, throw that shit on a fighter, give him protection from, fighter from fire, and now he'll heal whenever he takes fire damage. There's a lot of really cool things you can do with this. Um, you can't really hit yourself with a flame arrow because it does piercing damage, but you can definitely hit yourself with a fireball and heal yourself up that way. You can hit yourself with Agonizer Scorcher and pretty much any fire damage in the game will end up healing you. And there's a lot of cool shit you can do with this spell. And like I said, the, the highest damage mage spells in the game are actually Comet and Dragon's Breath. Uh, Skull Trap uh, and Horde Wilting do fuck tons of damage, but the ones that typically are the ones you gotta be like oh god i'm gonna get one shot and die here or comet and dragon's breath and this makes you completely immune to both of them and if you have another ring of fire resistance on you'll actually get healed whenever a mage casts those on you this spell is amazing it's a spell i cast on everybody in my party um literally every rest it's super good can't say enough good things about it protection from fire with scs is an s tier spell if you're not playing with scs protection from fire isn't nearly as good i don't think enemy mages actually get level 10 spells um, in the base game. 
So you really don't have to worry about it too much, but it's still a good spell even in the base because fire is just a, such a common element. Enemy mages will cast fireball more than any other damage. Really good spell, can't say enough good things about it. Up next, this is probably the weakest of the S-tier spells, is Remove Magic. Remove Magic is an abjuration spell, so that means transmuters can't use it. As of a, a casting time of 3, so it goes off fairly quickly. Just like the spell Magic, area effect 30 foot radius, range of 40 feet. However, unlike the spell Magic, this will only hit enemies. And this, the way this works is actually confusing a little bit. It's basically level base. In the sense that if you're a really high level, trying to remove magic on enemies that are way lower than you, it will almost always work and vice versa. If you're really low level, trying to remove buffs from enemies that are high level, it will almost never work. There's still a slight chance it will, but generally speaking, what I like to say here, if, if there's a 5 level difference, it will pretty much always or never work depending on which way you're going here. But what this does is it will remove all buffs from a target. And the way it actually works, the check itself, is based on uh, who casted spells. For example, if I have a mage who threw up stone skin, and I have a cleric who threw up bless, and he gets hit with a remove magic, the remove magic checks once for the stone skin, and then once again for the, uh, for the bless spell. If the mage throws up five buffs and the cleric throws up five buffs, remove magic will check once for all five of the mage buffs, and if it succeeds, all five buffs are gone. If it fails... All five buffs stay up. Check once again over here for the cleric buffs. If it succeeds, all cleric buffs are gone. If it fails, all the cleric buffs stay up. So if it fails twice, nothing happens. If it succeeds twice, every single buff that that dude had on, all ten buffs, are fucking gone. This is really good against enemies that don't actually use spell immunity abjuration. With SCS, pretty much every mage in the game does. However, this is useful for getting rid of cleric buffs, for example. When a cleric throws up regeneration or a flaming death, high level clerics, for example, throw up some really powerful enchantments that make them hard to hit. And honestly, you don't even want to hit. With blade, global blades and aura flaming death, you take a lot of damage every time your fighters hit them. Hitting them with remove magic is a great way to get that shit off. In the base game, when enemies don't cast spell immunity, remove magic is a great way for a mage to lose his buffs if he has a stone skin up, protection for magical weapons. Etc. Etc. Remove magic is a pretty good way to get rid of it. Breach is better, and we'll talk about breach a little later on. But remove magic is AOE. It hits everybody. If there's a group of fire giants and they're chugging potions of speed, and then there's a mage and a cleric and they're throwing up buffs on their party and their fire giants, one remove magic thrown out into the group from somebody who's like a bard, like Heralise, who's going to be super high level because he's a fucking bard. He's going to dispel everybody, all their buffs, all their potions, all that shit's going to be gone. This thing can turn the tides of a fight before the fight even starts. And it will turn the tides, tide uh, mid-fight as well. Just because it's so... Buffs in general in this game are really powerful. And especially late SOA TOB, they're extremely fucking powerful. And it's really critical that you're able to get rid of them. Remove magic is a good way of doing it. That being said, if you're a multi-class, don't even fucking bother. You will never actually get this to work. Because you're splitting your XP between two or, god forbid, three classes. And because this is based on your highest level, it's never going to work. Because you're always going to be lower level than the other person, and since if there's more than a 5 level difference, it's like, don't bother. Um, this won't work on everything. Uh, as it says here, Grease Web, Stinking Cloud, and other such spells doesn't dispel. There are a couple things that don't get dispelled. Imprisonment, Maze doesn't get dispelled. I think Altiuk's Resilient Sphere might not get dispelled. Um, but also keep in mind, Remove Magic is enemies only. This is not something you cast on a on party members. Um, this is something that you really focus on the enemies for. Dispel magic is something that you want to use. I, I don't know. I, I personally can't stand Dispel magic. Every time I cast Dispel magic, it ends up fucking me in the ass completely. It ends up destroying my own buffs and not destroying the enemy's debuffs, and it just ends up screwing me. It's like, it's like handing your enemy a sword and saying, here, fucking stab me, dude. It's just, there's no reason to use it. I mean... If you're playing if you're playing with saves and you want to roll the dice, go for it, but in no save, no reload, dispel magic is just a bad thing to take, while remove magic actually has some really good uses. Um, like I said, I don't recommend taking this on anything other than a pure class. This is something that Edwin, Nalia, and Imowen can take. This is something that Herdalis can take because he's gonna be a high level in general. This is just if you try to give this to Yon or fucking uh, somebody else that's a multi, or if you did it to yourself, you're a multi or a triple class. Don't bother. It's never going to land. 
And also, if you're using like somebody like Keldorn, Inquisitors dispel at twice their base level, which is just beyond busted. And you really don't need this, but it's still a really good spell to have. I personally like it. I don't use it that often, because with SCS, the Spell Immunity Abjuration is the only spell that makes you immune to remove magic, and enemy mages use it a lot, but there are a lot of situations where remove magic is super fucking useful, and when it's useful, it's game-breakingly useful. So, really good spell. Just only useful for certain classes, but when it's useful, it's useful. Alright, enough talking about remove magic. Up next, Skull Trap. Skull Trap's another S tier spell. Only two more S tier spells after this. Skull Trap's a necromancy spell, so illusionists can't use it. This is one of the reasons illusionists actually, in my opinion, they don't suck, but losing this spell is painful. So, this is an AoE spell very similar to Fireball. Just like Fireball, you have a saving throw to negate half the damage. 30 foot radius, although the radius is actually smaller. This is a lie. Casting time of 3, very quick. And you can throw it up to 60 foot away. The duration is actually permanent. What this does is it throws a skull out that sits there. And when enemies get too close, the skull will trigger, explode, and deal damage in a radius. The trigger is shitty as hell. I've had times where I've had people moving all over the place right next to it, doesn't go off. I've had times where I thought I was miles away from them, and they go off and somehow still manage to hit me. The radius um, is way less than Fireball. I don't give a shit what it says here. The radius is much smaller than Fireball. You have to be much closer to this to get hit by it. That being said, this spell is fucking really good. In the base game, this stacks ridiculously high. Um, a lot of spells are capped. For example, if you look at Fireball here, it's going to be capped at 10d6. Skull Trap is not capped at 10d6. I think in the base game, it might go up to 20 or even 30d6. I don't remember. It goes up ridiculously high. And that just does a ton of damage. When you use a Sequencer and throw three Skull Traps out, that is literally hundreds of damage. And you can stack them too by sleeping. It's one of the only ways I know of to kill Chandelar guaranteed is to sleep, Skull Trap, sleep, Skull Trap, sleep, Skull Trap, and have like 20 of them like right next to him, then pop them all at once and he just explodes into a bunch of itty bitty pieces. This spell is super good for taking out dragons, this spell is super good for taking out large groups of enemies. Um, and you can also make yourself immune to it by putting either A, Spell Immunity, uh, Necromancy, or putting Protection from Magical Energy on your fighters. So just like with Fireball, you can throw a Protection from Fire on your fighters, you can throw a Protection from Magical Energy on your fighters and they'll be immune to Skull Trap. And if your front line is immune to this, there's no reason for your back line not to be just chucking these into a fight. And it's really, it's, it's underrated just how much damage this does. It does 1d6 per level, just like Fireball, but again, fire damage is so common that a lot of enemies have resistances to it. A lot of enemies will be mildly, if not very, resistant to fire, while magic in general, not so much. Um, Skull Trap is pure magic damage, it's not elemental at all, so you'll find that there's less enemies uh, resistant to this. Don't forget, if you have MR, you're resistant to both, period. If I have magic resistance, I will take less fireball damage or negate it completely. Uh, same thing for Skull Trap, but if I have Fire Resistance, Skull Trap does full damage. This spell is really good. I use this all the time. I especially use it a lot in Sequencers. This spell is great in Sequencer, and it's really great once you get protection from Magical Energy on your party. I never use Fireball. After a certain point in the game, I don't use Wanda Fire ever again. I use Skull Trap for AoE damage. So I definitely recommend it. Good shit. Up next, Slow. Slow is one, also one of my all-time favorite spells. This is an Alteration spell, so Abjurers can't use it. This is a spell that's going to hit enemies only. They can negate the save, although they do, uh... I don't think they actually do get a penalty, do they? Oh, they do. Minus four penalty. I thought they did. Um, area effect, 30 foot radius, about 25 feet away. Last one turn, cast time of three very quickly. What this does, in a small group, small area, every enemy has to save with a minus four penalty or be slowed. They also get a minus four armor class penalty and a minus four attack penalty. And just like I was talking about before with haste, their movement rate is cut in half. This makes it very easy to kite, very easy to dodge their attacks, very easy to hit them and run without them having a chance to fight back. It's very, 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 very powerful. It also affects their cast time as well, and it makes it extremely easy to interrupt mages and fuck them up completely. This spell is awesome, and because enemies save at a minus four penalty, this spell is useful all the way through throwing a ball. This spell is fucking great. I will use this spell almost once every single fight. I sometimes will actually greater Malison beforehand, which makes enemies have to save with a minus eight penalty, which just is really fucking rare. It's honestly really rare that somebody rolls a fucking 18, 19, or 20 to actually successfully save versus this shit. 
Super good spell. Can't say enough good things about it. If an enemy is hasted, you can use a slow to counter it, just like with uh, I was talking about with haste before. Um, obviously, this will not go through magic resistance, so if you're trying to use this on a golem or a skeleton or the drow, you're going to run into problems. But if some fucking fighter pops a potion and oil of speed and you don't want to use remove magic or he's too high a level and remove magic's not going to work, slow is a great way to bring his ass down to size. Won't work on planetars. Don't fucking bother. They got way too much MR. Use uh, Flail of the Ages to take them down, but this spell is still super, super good. Super useful. Uh, I use this spell all the time. All the fucking time. Can't say enough good things about it. Alright, one more S tier spell, boys. Vampiric Touch, Necromancy spell. So Illusionist can't use it. This is a touch spell. Cast a time of 3, so it goes off pretty quickly. It'll hit one enemy, and it'll do 2d6 damage. Excuse me, 1d6 damage every two levels of the caster, up to a max of 66, and every single point of damage it does drains hit points, kind of like Larlock's Minor Drain, to the caster. But unlike Larlock's, it lasts for one turn, this lasts for one hour. This is actually a fairly long time, so long that you can actually use this as a pre-buff for your mages before a fight. And you can say to yourself, well, you know, 66, that's 36 damage, I mean, you know, this is probably going to be adding about 15, 20 hit points to your mages on a regular basis. That's a lot of hit points, but here's the kicker. You can use this on summons before a fight to give yourself a nice boost, but better yet, when you're playing on insane difficulty, you can use this on your own fucking party to drain their HP to give your mages a massive boost. If you have Corgan in the party, and you have Edwin cast Vampiric Touch on Corrigan on insane difficulty, he takes double damage, which means double the hit points. It's possible for Edwin to add 72 hit points to himself. If you have multiple mages in your party, use this on each mage uses this on somebody you can add literally hundreds of extra hit points to your party this is fucking insane you can double a mage's hit points by using this on a fighter or somebody else in your party who can easily be healed up by one heal spell from a cleric this is fucking incredible it's an enormous amount of survivability to your mages god forbid your mages get dispelled when you have 50 hp getting pounded into fucking smush Getting smushed by a giant golem is almost guaranteed. With this shit, your mage can actually take a hit. He can get crit by a golem and fucking live. It's unlikely, because golems can hit for like 150 damage, but... When I'm a Dragon Disciple, and I cast this spell, I can actually get pretty damn close to 200 hit points. And that it will actually live through a backstab from an assassin on insane difficulty. You can pass fighters with this. You will have more hit points than Mazzy with good RNG, depending on your items and gear and levels and stuff like that. It's actually amazing how underrated this spell really is. I don't use it enough. I should use it more. I don't, but I should use it more. I don't use it enough because I personally I can't stand having to buff all my characters with a bunch of shit. It takes too long, it's boring for the stream to watch, and it's kind of cheesy. Because if you throw up every single spell buff in the game to protect yourself, it's really nearly impossible to die. Um, there's just too many good spells. <clears throat> but I really would recommend this. Um, it's also okay for doing damage, you know. It's good for healing also if you don't have a cleric, because the way the game works is it will take the uh, false HP away first. And so, for example, if you have 60 out of 80 HP, use Vampiric Touch. Let's say you add 20 HP. Now you have 80 out of 100. After you rest, you're now at 80 out of 80 HP. Because the uh, false extra HP that you don't currently have is subtracted first. So you can actually use this before resting to heal yourself if you don't have a cleric in your party. I know that sounds like absolutely worthless, but there are times in the game where you won't have a healer, a cleric in your party. For example, if you're doing a Renicus's dungeon and you don't take Jahira. Um, God forbid your healer fucking dies when you're in the Candlekeep uh, dungeon. Um, and you can't obviously res her because there's no fucking res down there. If you're on uh, Werewolf Island and you can't escape, there's no fucking cleric to res you. And you lose your fucking cleric, Vampiric Touch is probably the only way you can heal yourself aside from potions. It definitely has its uses. I personally like it most as a buff, uh, just to add a massive amount of HP to your mages. Like I said, it can hit for up to 72 if you use it on an ally. That's a lot of fucking extra hit points, dude. It's really amazing. Super underrated spell. Can't say enough good things about it. Probably the weakest of the S tier spells. Maybe uh, on par with Remove Magic, but still really, really good. And it's undispellable, by the way. You get hit with the Dispel Magic, you lose Stone Skin, but you keep Vampiric Touch's hit points. That definitely makes it uh, pretty good in my book. Okay, 
Enough with the S tier spells. Time for Flame Arrow. Flame Arrow is an A tier spell. First of our A tier. Conjuration spells. So this means Diviners cannot use it. It's a target effect hitting one creature. Uh, they have a saved for half damage. Cast in time of three. So it goes off fairly quickly. The duration is uh, unimportant. It says one round, but it doesn't actually do anything. It just goes off right away. And it has a range of 60 feet, so it goes pretty far. What this does is it summons one Flame Arrow that streaks towards a person. Um, and it will do 1d6 piercing damage plus 46 fire. And they can save to block half the fire damage, I believe. I don't think they actually can save for the piercing damage. Yeah, half the fire damage. And they get an additional arrow every five levels. It's actually really fucking hard how hard this hits. Um, if you're using this at level five, not going to hit that hard. Level 10, it's okay. 15, 20, this hits pretty hard. When you use this in a sequencer, three of them at once... You can one-shot almost everybody in the game. These hit really, really, really fucking hard. Because you get so many arrows, and when you combine them all into a sequencer, it's an enormous amount of damage, where you could literally open up your combat log into one big page and see nothing but piercing and fire damage for that one person that happened instantly in that one uh, sequencer, or God forbid, spell trigger, if you do want to use it like that. You could. And the way you could use Sequencer and Spell Trigger to memorize spells and then cast them again on top of it, it's really amazing how much damage these things do. That being said, as I said before, fire damage is the most heavily mitigated damage in the game uh, for enemies. More enemies have fire resistance than any other elemental resistance, and the bulk of this damage is fire damage. Using this on Fur Crack is a waste of time. Using it on Adalon, not so much of a waste. It's pretty damn hard. This will be blocked by magic resistance as well, although I believe the piercing damage always goes through. I'm pretty sure you can actually block the fire with MR. Um, obviously, enemies that are immune to level 3 spells, like Globe of Minor Invulnerability, the Globe of Regular Invulnerability, will block this completely. Um, I think Mirror Images actually block it too, although I'd have to double check on that. I'm pretty sure a Mirror Image will block it. So you don't want to use this on a Mirror Image either, but this is actually pretty damn good for doing damage to a fighter. Fighters obviously have a lot of hit points, and this does a lot of fucking damage. To somebody that's not going to be saving, or is not, somebody who's not resistant to fighters, or excuse me, resistant to fire, this spell does a lot of fucking damage. Like I said, really can't say enough good things about it. This is almost an S tier spell. If it was any other element, this would be one of the best S tier spells in the game, but since it's fire, I'm going to leave it at an A tier, but still really, really good. Up next for our other A tier, only other, there are only two A tiers in uh, level 3, is Spell Thrust. This is the first um, spell uh, in the game that is used to actually attack other spells. I'll tell you a little bit more, more in a second. Spell Thrust is Abjuration spell. Transmuters can't use it. Targets one creature, casts time of three, so it goes off almost instantly, and the effect happens instantly. In this game, you have what are called Combat Protections and Spell Protections. Combat Protections are something that buffs you and makes you stronger. Like, for example, a haste spell, or a stone skin, or protection from magical weapons. Something that makes protects you from uh, something else. Something besides magic. Although I say that, protection from fire also will protect you from magical fire too, as well as regular fire. And then there are spells that actually protect you from spells like Spell Thrust. Minor Spell Deflection, Minor Global Invulnerability, Spell Immunity, Minor Spell Turning. These spells, like Minor Spell Turning are Minor Spell Deflection, are used literally to just block enemy spells. Spell Thrust will obliterate all of those, including Spell Immunity. The cool thing about Spell Thrust, unlike Secret Word, which is a level 4 spell, is even though Spell Thrust only works on level 5 and below, Spell Thrust takes all of these down at once. If an enemy has Deflection, Globe, Immunity, Spell Turning, all up at the same time, Spell Thrust will take all of those out at once instantly, period, making them very vulnerable to magic. Now, obviously, Spell Thrust will be blocked by Spell Trap, which we'll talk about much later on, which is level 9 spell. And other higher level spells, um, Globe of Invulnerability, for example, um, Spell Thrust doesn't do anything to. But for BG1, this spell is actually really useful. Uh, Minor Globe of Invulnerability is a very common spell with SCS and BG1, and Spell Thrust will take it down. If you don't... Until you get to Baldur's Gate, you don't have level 4 spells. So if someone throws up Minor Globe, they're basically immune to magic early on, period. Because you don't have any spell higher at level 3, and Lobo and Vulnerability makes you immune to 1, 2, and 3. Spell Thrust will take that down. You get this in the Bandit Camp, and it's super useful if you can actually learn it. But um, it's also useful still in SOA and TOB, um, in the sense that you can use a Ruby Ray to take down uh, Spell Shield, then you use a Spell Strike to take down the other shit, 
and then you can use a spell thrust if they try to throw up another spell immunity or another turning or anything like that and it's definitely has its uses you can also use ruby ray to take down a spell shield and then use this to obliterate everything else they have assuming they don't have a spell trap it sound i know this doesn't really sound like i'm making any sense but basically what i'm saying is when enemy mages start putting up spell protections in order to protect themselves from spells spell thrust is what you use if they're throwing up shit like stone skin protection for magical weapons you want to hit them with a breach if they're throwing up stone skin and then throwing up spell immunity and spell turning hit them with spell thrust before you hit them with breach otherwise the uh, breach won't work or it might even get reflected based on what spell protections they have but i'll talk a lot more about that once we get to four five and six for now spell thrust is a spell that's going to have its uses and especially in bg1 but it will have its uses in bg2 as well to get rid of some of the lower level spell protections all right i've rambled up and uh, i've made a uh, i'm done not making sense for now let's move on to something else tech delusion b tier spell tech delusion is a divination spell so conjurers can't use it no saving throw area effect a 30 foot radius casting time of three this is basically a better version of detect invisibility detect invisibility would only work on invisibility tech illusion also works on mirror image it will work on uh, Reflected Image, although who gives a fuck about that, right? And this also works on Non-Detection, because Non-Detection is also a, uh, I think it's a Illusion spell. Let me check. Oh, it's actually Abjuration, wow. Um, And so this is actually something you can use to get rid of an enemy who has Non-Detection up. There are very, very few enemies who do use that, but it does have its uses when you do need it. Um, This will also only hit enemies, and... It says that magic resistance doesn't affect it, but in my experience it does. Um, if somebody has magic resistance, the tech delusion does nothing. That might be with the mods I'm running. I haven't tested this in the base game with no mods, so I might be wrong and this might actually be right, but I'm pretty sure magic resistance will block this, but I'll have to do some more testing to be sure. But this is really great for when you have uh, multiple mages who are all throwing up invisibility and mirror image. This will break all that shit right away. You don't want to let a mage have improved invisibility up. This will give them a massive bonus to their saves. This will make them untargetable by mage spells. This will make them very hard to hit by fighters and archers, etc. You want to get rid of it ASAP. This will dispel it on every mage, every fucking person there, all the enemies in 30 foot radius, and also take off their mirror images as well, making them very easy to hit. Definitely not an A tier spell or S tier spell because there's a lot of things this doesn't work for. Um, if someone has the cloak and non-detection, despite it saying it gets rid of it, this will not work on Slythe getting his ass out. He'll stay invisible. Um, this will not work on Mislead or Simulacrum. This will not work on anybody who has spell immunity divination, just like Detect Invisibility. And this is a level 3 spell. Remember, at level 2, there aren't really a lot of good spells. I think there is like Mirror Image, Web, and one more, Blur. Those are the S tier spells. Level 3, there's like 7 or 8 S tier spells. There's a lot of shit you want to take. And there's just not enough space for Detect Illusion. And for that reason, it really falls off the list big time. If you take this as a sorcerer, personally, I think you're fucking up. Um, that's up to you, of course. If you want to take it, go for it. But there's so many better spells that you just... You don't have space in your spellbook for Detect Illusion. And it will definitely have its use as times, but... I personally only cast this via scroll. I don't cast this in my spellbook ever. But when you need it, and you have a scroll for it, it's definitely useful. And for that reason, I'm leaving it still at B tier. Definitely a good spell. Alright, up next, Dire Charm. Dire Charm's a B tier spell. Enchantment Charm spell. So this means invokers can't use it. Just like uh, the Charm Person spell, this is going to hit one creature, saving throw to negate. Although, with this one, they don't get a, a bonus to save. So that's a good thing about it. Lasts for five rounds, much shorter. And uh, same restrictions apply. Um, only works on humanoids. You can't charge an a Charm an Ogre with this. I don't think this actually works on a lot of enemies that you find in BG2. This is really something you're going to be using on, say, a fighter, or a cleric, or a mage who for some dumb reason didn't put protection spells up. And this can be useful in a fight, um, at times. Uh, especially if your own party members get charmed, you can use a dire charm to counter that charm and charm them back. But I, I really don't ever memorize this. Um, there are a few instances in the game where you want to charm somebody. The guard and Diarnus keep, this is good for that. Um, and then like I said, just charming party members back. This is something that if a sorcerer already has on him, fine, whatever. Um, but there's really no reason to ever take Dire Charm. Um, it's just, it, it's not reliable enough. There's no penalty to saves like Domination has. Even then, Domination's not all that great, because level 5 has even more amazing spells. Um, like I said, I've used this occasionally on Baloth in the past, just because I have it, and he's a sorcerer, and I don't want to use a fireball, and I'm bored. 
It's fun to play with for sure, but definitely not a great spell. But there are times when you want it, like I said before, for the guard and the artist keep in a couple other locations, but not really good. Not really too much fun or cool stuff you can do with this. Um, Charm Person has a lot of fun dialogues. Dark Charm doesn't give you all that shit. Up next, Not Detection. Not Detection is also a B tier spell. It's an abjuration spell, so transmuters can't use it. Targets one creature, casting time of three, so it goes off pretty quick. And this lasts for four hours, then basically makes them uh, immune to divination spells. The fuck is Clarodiance? I have never read this before. Never even heard this before. I'm going to Google this after this video. Anyways, Clairvoyance, Locate Object, ESP, Detect Spells, including Invisibility Purge. Um, I don't think this actually works with True Sight. I'll have to double check it to be sure. I'm fairly certain True Sight gets around it. The spell can be useful at times early on, but not so much later, because enemies, Undead, see through Invisibility, Dragon, see through Invisibility, Mind Flayer, see through Invisibility. I think the only high-level enemy that doesn't, that isn't a humanoid, are Beholders. I'm pretty sure everything else does. That includes Sanctuary as well, which we'll talk about when we get to the Cleric spells. And so, there really are a few times where you're invisible, and you need non-detection. And it's going to actually be useful. But there are a few times when that happens. When you're doing the Shadow Thieves, for example, it's really nice to have um, invisibility on somebody squishy like Viconia, who you don't want to get backstabbed because she'll fucking explode. And it's nice to give her non-detection so she can stay in Sanctuary or invisible and not have to worry about getting hit with a Detect Invisibility by uh, Mavar and then getting backstabbed by Thieves. And so there are times where this is useful, for, for, but for the most part, its, its uses are fairly limited. Um... Like I said, I don't think it works for True Sight. I, I might be wrong on that, but like I said, the enemies that you really wish this worked for, it doesn't do anything for because they just see through invisibility automatically. I would love for this to work for Liches. If I can make my certain spellcasters invisible and then throw non-detection on them, and then they can't get targeted by Kangax, that'd be fucking awesome, but it doesn't work like that. If it did, it will probably be an S-tier spell, but it doesn't, so it's going to be a B-tier for me. Definitely has its uses, but not all that great. Up next, protection from cold, abjuration spell, so transmuters can't get this. Various number of protection from fire, targets one creature, very low cast time of three, lasts for one turn per level, so a very long time. Same thing, exact thing, except it's cold. Um, like before, I said before, I have never found magical cold in this game. Everything is just boiled down to cold damage, period. Whether it's from a wand of cone of cold, Adelon breathing her icy dragon breath, or fucking somebody doing the level 4 cold cloud kill spell, whatever the hell that thing's called, the ice rain shit. This will make you completely immune to cold damage. Why is this a B tier spell when cold is probably the least common element in the game? Well, because if you don't have this on when fighting Adelon, your entire party is going to get turned to a block of ice. Her Dragon's Breath is actually the most dangerous in the game, because not only does it do cold damage, which is hard to mitigate, because there are very few items that give cold resistance. I think literally the boots of uh, Boots of the North are the only thing in the game that actually gives cold resistance. With fire, there's rings, there's armor, etc., etc. Cold's a lot harder to find. Um, there are a couple scrolls that work, but of course those can be dispelled too, although this can be as well. But if you don't have that shit on when you fight her, when you get hit by her Dragon's Breath for like 200 fucking cold damage, you turn to her a block of ice and shatter. Just like if you got petrified, which means not only is that character permanently deleted but the items are too which is very very frustrating um this spell is literally b tier because of adelon if adelon didn't exist i would put this at c maybe borderline rp tier um but because she exists you need protection from cold when you fight her this spell is super super good literally for that reason um i don't think i've ever used it once after fighting her i think i might have used it maybe in watcher's keep in the cold room um, I don't think I know for a fact I never used it in the planar prison or excuse me the planar sphere when going into the cold room after killing told Jarius. spell sucks outside of a fighting Adalon but boy if you fight Adalon without it and you don't have other scrolls of cold uh, protection you're gonna be in for a bad fucking time dude let me tell you all right so now we're gonna get on to the C tier spells <clears throat> these are spells that are for the most part pretty bad don't really want to take them ever Although, occasionally, you might end up having to. First one is Dispel Magic, Abjuration Spell, so Transmuters can't use this. You'll notice that I'm saying Transmuter and Abjurer a lot. That's because there are more spells for Abjuration than any other spell in the game, period. 
They use are a lot of buff spells, and a lot of spell strike spells as well. It's one of the reasons I think transmuters are actually the worst specialist mage in the game. Aside from wild mages, who will uh we'll talk about those when we get to them. But um so what this will do <clears throat> is like I talked before before about remove magic, exact same shit. Same cast time, area of effect, range, and this will hit everybody, unlike remove magic. And this will have a chance to dispel buffs, as well as debuffs as well. Again, using the same formula I said before. This will not only target buffs from each individual person who casted, and as well as debuffs, debuffs from each individual person who casted. The reason this spell sucks is because more often than not, especially if you're running with multi-classers like Yan and some other people like that, um, Yan Yansen, uh, this will end up dispelling all their buffs and frequently missing the debuffs you're trying to get rid of. I have gotten Yan permakilled by using this spell. And I felt terrible about it. This spell never works when you want it to. Fucking ever. I have tried to use it many, many times, and it just, the RNG just never goes in my favor. There's always a slight chance it will work, and always a slight chance it will fail when you're really high level. But by the time you're really high level, you don't need Dispel Magic anymore. Breach is fucking better. There are very few times when you want to use Dispel Magic, because when you're using Dispel Magic on enemies, Unlike remove magic, you're hitting your party too. So if I'm half Corgan and I have him drink a potion to give him strength and heroism power, turn him into a buff motherfucker and tell him to go in there and kick some ass, and then I throw a dispel magic on the cleric in the back line he's about to fight, and it bounces and Corgan just gets dispelled. I just lost 3,000 gold worth of potions, which are gone instantly, and the cleric's still casting with all his buffs up because he's a fucking higher level than me. Enemies in this game are typically higher level than you. And if you're fighting low-level enemies, you don't fucking need remove magic. If you're getting ambushed by a bunch of ogres, you drop one cloud killer and one death spell and they're all fucking... They're all literally fucked. You don't need to spell magic. And if you're fighting a bunch of higher-level enemies, uh, spell magic's never gonna work. And for that reason, I think the spell is extremely overrated. I know a lot of people who think the spell is great. I have found nothing but pain by using it. Uh, remove magic is a good spell. Dispel magic is not. I don't recommend it ever. Really ever. It, it ends up fucking you way more often than it does fucking the enemy. Although it has a chance to fuck the enemy, it just never does. If you want to use dispel magic, go grab Kaldorn and tell him to dispel magic. Inquisitors dispel at twice their level. Although I've personally nerfed that in my game because I think that's beyond busted. But, you know, you do you, boys. If that's what you want to do, you just do it. Up next is Fireball. Mm, excuse me. Fireball's a C tier spell, and I know um, a lot of people disagree with that, but it just is. Um, just like with the uh, Skull Trap, same thing. 30 foot radius, although Fireball is much bigger than Skull Trap. Like I said before, Skull Trap also says 30 foot radius, but that's a fucking lie. Fireball has a much, much higher radius. Same range, same thing. Saving throw, save versus half. This fire damage 1d6 per level, up to a max of 10d6. Like I said before, um, Fire is the most mitigated element in the game. There are more enemies with fire resistance than acid, than cold, than lightning, than fucking whatever, what have you. Uh, and for that reason, also again with the max of 10d6, there's just really no reason to use Fireball in BG2 and onward. In BG1, you have this great thing called the Wand of Fire, which will allow you to cast 20 Fireballs from a wand without having to need to memorize this spell. So you really don't need it in BG1 either. Um, you can argue that if you get it at the Bandit Camp before you get to Baldi's Gate, then uh, before you do Devaron, that you can use Fireball, but even then, it's just, there's very few times, I think I used this once at the Bandit Camp, um, and it, or I just use a Skull Trap, which I can buy from fucking uh, High Hedge, and it's just, just no reason to ever take it. There really just truly honestly isn't. There's, if you want to use Fireball, get the Wand of Fire. If you want to do AOD, AOE damage, just get Skull Trap, dude. And like I said before, same thing uh, when I was talking about protection from fire. If you do have over 100% elemental resistance on your fighters, you can throw fireballs into the thick of the fight, which will do damage to enemies as well as heal your fighters because they're getting healed by the fire damage, which is cool. But, I mean, it's still not all that great. It's just there are better spells to be taken. Like I said, there's a lot of S-tier spells in level 3, and fireball is definitely not fucking one of them, guys. If you have nothing better, if you have no spells at level 3 because of whatever... Then fireball is just fine, but there are better, and when you can get better, you should get better. Shouldn't be using fireball. Up next is ghost armor. Ghost armor is C tier. Um, ghost armor comes at an awkward time. So ghost armor has is a buff spell, just like spirit armor, just like armor, just like shield. Targets only the caster. Quick time lasts about an hour, and it puts their AC at two. 
The problem with Ghost Armor is by the time you get to Baldur's Gate, you're going to be getting fairly close to level 4 spells. And when you get level 4 spells, you get an armor called Spirit Armor, which gives you um, 1 AC, and it gives you a plus 3 bonus to save your spells. And since these aren't cumulative, they don't stack together, there is no reason to ever cast Ghost Armor. And you can't get it before getting to Baldur's Gate. Actually, I think there is one in the Onkeg Pit by the Farmer's House, just north of Friendly Arm. But that's it. And but if you're already there, and like I said, there's other level 3 spells I'd rather have. I'd rather have a Flame Arrow or a Skull Trap and, or Protection from Fire. All three of those spells you get before the City of Baldur's Gate. And those are just so much better than Ghost Armor, and by the time you get to Baldur's Gate and you buy Spirit Armor, or find it as a drop or what have you, then you're never going to cast Ghost Armor again. Shield, as we said before, still has its uses, because it makes you immune to Magic Missile. And Sequencer Magic Missiles hit really fucking hard on Insane Difficulty. So that shit actually has its uses. Ghost Armor does not. At no point in the game are you going to be like, shit, if only I had a Ghost Armor right here. That's never going to happen. Spirit Armor is way better, and Shield is on par with this it's actually kind of ridiculous shield is actually gives you the same missile ac as this and slightly too worse melee it's just it spell blows dude it's not rp tier because it actually you know it does help you it's not like it's it's complete dog shit but it's damn close dude it's definitely a sack of shit that somebody set on fire really no reason to ever take ghost armor guys nothing cool you can do with it it's just it blows up next is Hold Person. Hold Person's a C-tier spell as well. Uh, saving through in the gates. I think they actually get a slight penalty. Minus one. Um, and this is very similar to the Hold Person spell that Clerics get. However, the Cleric spell is level two. Also a fairly quick cast. Also lasts for one turn. Also negated by a saving throw. This, I think the Hold Person for Cleric actually does 1d4 people as well. Why would you cast a level three mage spell when a level 2 cleric spell does the exact same fucking thing and again this only hits humanoids right doesn't work on undead doesn't work on giants doesn't work on a f all sorts of fucking shit um so there's really just no reason you should ever be taking a whole person on a mage especially like i said before there are so many good s tier spells for level 3 that you just don't have space for whole person and if i want to hold somebody i'm going to use a fucking cleric because they can get whole person at level 3 a mage can't get it to level 5, and if you're casting this from a scroll, then you're basically roleplaying anyways. I mean, it's up to you. If you want to go and waste your time with that shit, I'm not going to read off all the dumb... Oh, like I said, we've read this before, and it's the exact same... Charm and Hold are all going to be affecting the exact same things. So, like I said, there's just no reason to ever take it. It's not a good spell. Hold Undead, vicariously, although... It... But Hold Undead is just as shitty, but for completely different reasons. Basically the same thing, a casting time of 3, it actually uh, lasts for 2 rounds per level, which is longer. Still gonna save and throw it in the gate, but this only hits undead, and here's the problem with this spell. The undead you want to hold are immune to this. The only thing this is gonna hit is extremely low level skeletons, extremely low level fucking gas and ghouls, and that's literally it. The higher level skeletons, which start coming out of level 7, get um, uh, magic resistance. And then every level after that, when you start seeing the giant skeletons with the two-handers, those have a hell of a lot of magic resistance. And when you have magic resistance, this spell never fucking hits. And if it doesn't hit, there's no reason to fucking cast it. If you're using a level 3 spell to hit a low-level skeleton, you can use a skull trap and one-shot all the skeletons there. There's absolutely no reason to ever take hold undead when a fucking skull trap will do the exact same thing. The only time you could ever possibly make an argument for this spell is when you're fighting vampires. And because of the way vampires move and spread out all over the place, the spell is never going to actually do what you want it to do. Other undead are slow, right? Gas and ghouls, they shamble towards you. So this spell actually takes them out pretty easily and fairly well. It doesn't do the same thing for vampires, who move at hasted rates, and... Even then, it's just fucking... It's just trash. There's no reason to really ever take this spell. And I apologize for not actually reading it. Uh, these are both... Uh, this is necromancy, so illusions can't do it. And uh, this is enchantment, so invokers can't use it. I apologize for not saying that earlier, not reading out the spell, what it does, but these spells are just so bad, guys, that there's really just no reason to ever take them. They're not RP tier, because they do have some uses, but they're damn close to it. Up next is Lightning Bolt, definitely a C tier spell. It's an evocation spell, so enchanters can't use it. Uh, has very similar to a fireball in the fact in the sense that it has uh, 1d6 per damage per level. Uh, they can save or half the damage. However, the range is much, much higher. 
Uh, casting time of three goes off fairly quickly, and what this does, it will shoot a lightning bolt towards the target. When it hits them, it will bounce. Um, I have tried many, many times to find a way to see if there's some formula that the game does to calculate when and where it will bounce and in what direction. I have never been able to actually reproduce that shit to make it work. In the sense that if you use this and could make it bounce the way you want off walls to hit the same person over and over again, this would do a devastating amount of damage. However, it there's no real way to make that happen. So what ends up happening when you use your lightning bolt, you throw it at somebody, it bounces off them, and then it returns and hits your fucking party members, or it hits the other fighters that are near the guy and bounces off them, and you end up just shooting yourself in the foot with this spell. It's just, it's absurd how much damage this thing does to your own party. When enemies throw this at you, it's devastating. When you throw it at enemies, it's extremely fucking lackluster. It's, it just never does what you want it to do. It does do lightning damage, which is very, un, uh, very, uh, what's the word? Fire damage is commonly mitigated. It's very uncommon for enemies to be immune to electrical damage. Although it does happen, it's just very uncommon. But since you really can't control where the lightning bolt bounces, there's just really no time that you really ever want to use this spell. It looks cool. It sounds cool. And it can permakill just like other elements. But it's just, it's just not a good spell. It just doesn't do what you want. Um, if you can use this in close quarters with a bunch of walls and you're immune to electricity or have globe of modern vulnerability up or something, I guess you can argue that you can use this to do an enormous amount of damage in a very tight quarter, but I mean, it's, that's really basically asking for the stars to align a situation that's really never going to happen. That's just really wishful thinking on your part. If there was some way to actually control the bounces, this spell would be pretty fucking good. But the fact that there isn't puts this at C tier and it's just, it's going to stay there forever. Up next is Minor Spell Deflection, or uh, Minor Spell Turning, excuse me. Oh, it is Minor Spell Deflection. I wrote it down correctly, I'm just an idiot. Alright, so this is an Abjuration Spell. Transmuters can't use this. This is a buff for the caster only, cast in time of 3, so fairly quick cast, lasts for 3 rounds per level. And this, just like Spell Deflection, will cause spells to uh, be absorbed and consumed up to 4 spell levels. This means 4 Magic Missiles. This means, um... Let's see. Uh, that still wouldn't work. A vampiric touch and a magic missile. Vampiric touch and a chromatic orb. Um, it will also absorb up to 7th uh, level spells. Um, and then the spell will be cancelled afterwards. For example, it's, it's really hard for me to explain this, but in the sense that it absorbs up to 4 spell levels, but if somebody hits you with a level 6 spell, that spell will get absorbed and this will disappear. And this will work up to 4 spell levels, so up to 4 magic missiles, Two level two spells, one level three and one level one, or one level three and one level six. It absorbs, it can absorb quite a bit, but in general, the spell is just a waste of time. Uh, by the time you get this spell, you really aren't going to be using it. Um, you should be very close to level four, which gives you minor globe, and most of the spells in the game are going to be um, absorbed by minor globe. Minor spell deflection does not do anything against the spells you want to absorb, like cloud kill, like chaos, like confusion. Um, so it really doesn't have its fucking uses. Later on in the game, Spell Deflection actually can be useful in certain situations. Minor Spell Deflection does not have such a thing. Um, spell Trap you can use to actually gain spell levels back. You don't get that here. I, I've, I've looked for ways to where situations where this would be really useful and I just couldn't find any. Also, innate abilities go through Spell Deflection, which makes no sense to me, but it's just the way it is. Um, for example, if somebody has a Larlock, like the base character, right? He has... Um, the PC has certain spells that he can cast and use as innate abilities. And certain innate abilities that enemies have like that will go through minor spell deflection. And that makes it even worse than it already is, and it's already not good. There's really no reason to ever take this shit. Doesn't work for AoE, only works for single target, which are very limited to begin with, and it's gone pretty quick. Doesn't block what you want it to. No reason to take it. Up next is Monster Summoning 1, which is really a shame. Um, in the base game, all the summons were actually extremely powerful, monster summoning especially. Um, in BG2, which is what the EE uses, that engine, they got nerfed heavily because they were too powerful. Still good. Um, monster summoning is not, but the other summons are. Um, uh, well, some of them are. Take that back. All, basically, all the summons got nerfed tremendously. Animate Dead and a Greater Fire Elemental are still very powerful, but for the most part, the others are actually pretty shitty. I'll talk about that more in a second. So, Conjuration Spell means Diviners can't use it. 
It has a cast time of four, so not too long, but we're starting to get up there almost half a round here. Lasts for two rounds plus one per level, and we'll summon a random selection of three HD monsters, 60% chance of teasing one monster, 40% of two monsters. This is a lot. Don't listen to anything this says. You can get two, you can get three, or you can get one monster. Um, and they'll have a very various HD uh, hit dice. Sometimes you'll get one Ogrillion. Sometimes you'll get a Kobold Commando and two Hobgoblins. Sometimes you'll get two Ogrillions and a, and a Hobgoblin. Um, it's just completely fucking random, and what this says is a lie. In the base game, you actually got six monsters every time you did a monster summoning, and they stacked indefinitely. If I cast this spell three times, I could have 18 Ogrillions in my fucking party charging at Saravok. It was extremely powerful. And obviously they nerfed that because it was really fucking strong. And they nerfed it to the... Not only they made the monsters crappier, and then they made you get less of them, and you can only have five summons max now in BG2. And that's kind of a shame, but at the same way, I, at the same time, I kind of get it because summons are fucking busted as is. Mordekainen's Animate Dead are two really, really powerful summons for reasons we'll talk about when we get to them. Monster summoning is no longer useful. In BG1... There's no reason to use this spell because you have the wand of monster summoning. And then in BG2, this spell could just... It's worse than every other spell here. I would take a lightning bolt before I took a monster summoning, you know what I mean? It's just... This spell is completely worthless now. The summons die in two seconds, if that. And you don't get nearly as many as you used to. It's just... It, this spell's literally been gutted. If you're playing the base game with the six discs and shit, monster summoning is one of the best spells in the game. But if you're playing the Enhanced Edition using the Baldur's Gate 2 engine, don't bother, because this spell sucks. Alright, only a couple spells left. Protection from Normal Missiles. Again, a spell that sounds great, but by the time you get it, it's just completely dog shit. We'll target one creature, cast a time of three, so fairly quick, and it'll make them immune to Normal Missiles for one hour. Doesn't protect against magic, so Magic Missile, Lightning Bolt, Fireball, all that shit still goes through. Doesn't protect against Melsonute Meteors, because they're magic. Doesn't protect against summoned magical shit, like the summoned uh, bullet that uh, druids can use, whatever the fuck it's called. Um, it also doesn't protect against any magical weapons in general. Uh, and by the time you get this spell, it's a level 3 spell, which you won't get until fucking Baldur's Gate, basically. Every enemy in the game is using magical and uh, rage weapons. They're using magical arrows, plus one, even sometimes before that. The only games I, and the only enemies I can think of that use regular arrows are kobolds. And fucking bandits. Every other, and even then, only some of the bandits. A lot of the bandits are using enchanted weapons. Enchanted ammunition, I should say. And protection from normal missiles doesn't protect against that shit. Doesn't protect against acid arrows. Doesn't protect against fire arrows. Doesn't protect against arrows of dispelling. It's, it's fucking worthless. There's no reason to ever take this spell, and it looks cool. And it sounds cool, too. If any of you guys played the original Baldur's Gate, you know what I'm talking about when you get to Devaor and you hear those fucking sounds, you're like, oh shit, what the fuck is that? This is a tough-ass mage. I think they got rid of that in BG2. I don't remember hearing the sound effect, but to be honest, I don't think I've ever cast this once on stream. Playing this, streaming this game for months now, I've never used this once. It's a garbage spell. Don't fucking take it, dudes. If you're playing with the SCS component that turns a lot of plus one weapons into fine weapons, non-magical, this would be useful. If you're not playing with that, don't fucking bother. This spell blows in BG1 and it gets even worse in BG2. And by the time you get to TOB, I don't think you can actually find non-magical arrows. I don't think anybody even sells them anymore. Just a complete waste, dude. Just shame because it could be good, but... Like I said, in BG2, there are ways to get around for all ranged weapons, not just normal ones. The spell sucks. Kind of shitty that it sucks, but it does. Alright, I'm just double checking to make sure I didn't miss anything. We only got two spells left here. Alright, so we got Wraith Form here, Alteration and Illusion Spell. I haven't actually tested this. I'm not sure if this means both Abjurers and Necromancers can't use this or what. But this is a more interesting spell for sure. It is a buff for the caster only, cast time of 1, so it goes off almost instantly. Lasts for 2 rounds per level, and it basically makes you immune to non-magical weapons and gives you 25% MR. That sounds really interesting. I don't think this was in the base game, because I definitely would have remembered it. I think this was something that was added with uh, the Enhanced Edition, because I don't remember it in BG2 either, although I might be crazy. Um, you can't cast a spell as well you have it on, though, so... And considering the fact that this is a mage spell, it seems kind of stupidly pointless for you to cast this. If your goal is to avoid being hit, you should be casting Invisibility. If your goal is to, um... Uh, 
uh, just give yourself a buff that makes you stronger while you, so you can keep fighting, you should be casting Mirror Image. There are better spells at lower levels that basically accomplish the same goal that this spell is supposed to do. And don't forget again, enemies are going to have magical weapons. You'll get to the point where every enemy in the game has magical weapons. You're not going to be attacked by normal weapons anymore. This only works for normal weapons. Why on earth would you fucking be using a spell that makes you immune to shit that's not being hit? That you are that you don't have to worry about anyways, that's, it just doesn't exist. And that it also stops you from casting spells. It's like, I, I don't fucking get, this is, should really be an RP tier spell. It really should. But I'm going to keep it because it does give you 25% resistance to MR, uh, magic resistance to magic damage, excuse me. Resistance to magic damage and magic resistance are two completely different things. It's something to keep in mind. However, if uh, you can't run from a fight, if you're stuck, maybe you can read a scroll with this on and give yourself some resistance to magic damage and hope it does something. I'm reaching, I'm grasping at straws here, dude. I don't know what you could possibly do to really be like, oh, thank God I had Wraith form. Oh, that fight would have gone so badly if I didn't. Whew, good thing I got this spell. Because the thing is, you get this spell when you kill Pratt in the candle keep. After you do that, you go back to Boulder's Gate and kill Saravok and the game's over. That's when you get this spell. And by that point, how many people are going to be having non-magical weapons? You're going to be running into plus three weapons. Slythe has a plus three fucking short sword. And Kristin has the fucking grave tooth and Saravox And Saravok's not using a regular two-handed, you know what I mean? It's just... The spell blows, dude. But it's not as bad as the next spell, which is Clairvoyance. The only RP spell of level three. This spell is just it's an rp tier spell man it's just all there is to it cast in time of three divination spells so conjurers can't use it and it reveals the geographical features and buildings of the region the character is currently exploring cannot reveal creatures or their movements it just basically reveals the map which to be fair if you've never played the game is pretty great and if you're role playing i would totally cast this spell i am not currently role playing and so I will never be using this spell ever. To be fair, I do know most of the areas like the back of my hand. But if you don't, maybe you want to give this spell a go. But for the most part, this spell is just a roleplay spell tier, period. Alright guys, that is going to do it here. I went a little bit faster this time because there's a lot of spells here that are just... There's a lot of spells in level 3, period. I think this is the longest video we've done. A good handful of these are just fucking trash in general. Monster summoning, minor spell deflection, holds. I, I mean, I could read off this spell and tell you a little bit more about it in detail. I try to go over everything I can think of, some cool tricks you can do with this, and there just, there just aren't any for some of these spells. For Flame Arrow, Haste, Invisibility, Melsonute Meteors, there's all sorts of great shit you can do with that. For Wraith Form, Protection from Normal Missiles, I mean, I'm struggling, dude. To find a time where, you're, where you not only have this spell... But it would be good for you to use it where you're just like, shit, if only I had protection from normal missiles and wraith form right here, I could turn my mage into an extremely squishy and useless fucking character. That would be ace. But uh, that just doesn't happen. But thank you so much for watching, guys. If you think I'm full of shit, definitely let me know in the comments, man. I want to fucking hear it. I want you to tell me I'm a dumbass. If you agree with me, let me know in the comments. Tell me what your fucking favorite spell is. What is your favorite level 3 spell? What is the spell you find yourself using all the time? Do you disagree? Do you think it's Fireball? Do you think Fireball is great? Do you agree with me about Melis Minute Meteors? I want to fucking hear about it. Let me know in the comments, guys. We stream every single day at 10 a.m. Definitely go and follow me on Twitch as well. I hope you guys have a fucking awesome day. A great day today. You can do anything you want to do, guys. I believe in you. I love you. God loves you. God bless, my friends. We'll catch you next time, dudes.